Now, the most important thing, characters. This is just a history. Now, let's come to the character. Before wealth, she was known to be noble. How many of you in this room, don't show me hands, when you go home and sit with yourself, again, brothers and sisters, you're going to say to yourself, you know, when my name is being mentioned, remember the play? I'm going to be remembered as the noble woman. The rich, the beautiful, you know, the talented versus the noble. Which one is harder? Absolutely. Noble. Nobody talk about how she looked like. And this is a woman. Tall, short, beautiful, fair skinned. Nobody. Because that's not the issue. I have no choice the way I look. I have no choice in my skin color. I don't have no choice in my height. Everything Allah gives me is beautiful. Done. But I have a choice in the way I conduct myself and I treat people and interact with people. So she was known for nobility. And also because of her lineage. She's a businesswoman. Now the most important thing, add to it, she was very brave. Brave for many reasons, but one of them being in a profession that is male-dominated, but also brave how she supported the Rasul She supported him, and she went out and said, I am a Muslim in a, a city where Islam was not accepted, let alone being a woman. Being all this, brave, but she was very modest. This, this haya, this character that we are losing, I love it here. Because it, you see it, you see it in, in, in the society. Again, you don't know your value because you all live here, everybody does the same. But when you, when you have a, someone, a visitor, then he or she will notice the difference. The, the woman of the Far East, full of haya, and may Allah keep you this way. Don't change. It's, it's hard to stay the way you are because of the influence that comes from the outside. But the way you speak, you are soft-spoken. I can't tell you how many times I said, can you say it again? When you laugh, you laugh with haya. So here she is, this is strong, rich woman, noble woman, but yet full of modesty. She, that's why she sent the Rasul She was not going with the men all the time, no. And she was very generous. She supported him. Supported him with her money. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Very generous. And supported also other people. And I'm, I'm literally summarizing. If you read books about her, you will see these characters. She was very intelligent. Smart. She knows where to trade, with what trade. That's why she sent him to Syria or to Bilad al-Sham, to that part of the world. Because there was a lot of merchandise there. And she, when she was a widow, she did not rush to get married. In that time, in that uh, society, widow would get married right away. Both men and women. Not her. She waited. She doesn't want to be like everybody else. Just because everyone is getting married, I have to get married. No, I'm going to get married when it is good for me by the standard of Allah. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. It's not the standard of the society. Standard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She is one of the women, and this is again unique for her. She's his wife in dunya and akhirah. Don't you want love to meet her? When I was preparing this, I was like, I don't know, if I see her, what will I say? Subhanallah, subhanallah. And... She, when Rasul even before, before he became a Rasul and this is for everybody, this is how you support your spouse, is when he used to go for seclusion, and you know all the story, and used to lo- go for seclusion for days, you know that. He didn't say, you left me alone, and here I am with the children and, and all this. You know why you're laughing? What did she do? She prepared food. And she went and gave him the food. Gave him a space, as we say these days. Each human being of us, each one of us, need their own space sometimes. You know, and I'm sure you all, women, don't you sometimes say, I don't want you to talk to me, just, I just want to be alone. Then the child come and nag on your head. Right? That's called space. 
Same thing for the men. They come in very tired. They don't want to talk. Give them their space. The smart, intelligent woman and the smart, intelligent man is when he knows when the spouse needs the space and give him the space or give her the space. That's what she did. She, Subhanallah. Now, indication of her smartness is when the revelation came in. And you all know the story is there. What did she do? Supported him by words. Right? They didn't say, are you out of your mind? Whatever you heard, it's probably nothing. One. Then, in case, we don't know, but in case she had doubts, or Rasul had doubts, which probably not, why did she took him to her cousin? Right? She took him to her cousin. You all know the story. What did he tell him? This is the man that is going to come and his people will give him a hard time and they will make him leave. And Rasulullah said, هم, They will make me leave Mecca. So basically, what did she do? She supported him. Knew what he needs at the moment and acted. He didn't tell her, go to Waraqa. You don't read anywhere. They said, he asked her. She took him. Now remember, this is a woman of paradise. The woman of paradise, and I say this to myself before anyone, or a person of paradise, has to be different and special. You have to do something 99% of the people will not do. So when you walk, and subhanAllah, I thought everybody in Malaysia looked like you. It turned to be not, or Kuala Lumpur. So yesterday I was able to walk, and I was like, oh, so there is people who are not like I see. Let's put it this way, right? So when you are there, and probably here is much less than when, if you live in the West, and you're the only woman, or you're the only man, right? Everybody is drinking and you're not. Everyone is whatever and you are not. Remember, you have to be different. Because Jannah is different. And it's not going to be given to everybody. Ala inna sal'atallahi ghaliya. Ala inna sal'atallahi al-jannah. What Allah has is very expensive. And what Allah has is Jannah. So remember this. Work and be different. Something she was the only one woman who got that. Allah greeted her. You've seen this here. Sayyidina Jibreel came to Rasulullah Wasallam, And uh, he said, she's going to come in bringing you food. Tell her, Allah send his salam. Ya Allah. And what do you answer Allah? Do you say, wa alaykum salam? <laughs> See how smart she is. What do you say? And she said, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta yadha al-jalali wal ikram. You have to respond because that's a greeting, right? So she said, Ya Allah, you are the peace. You are the source of peace. And peace comes from you. Glorify you. Again, how special she was that Allah, from all his creation, sent her salam. And Sayyidina Jibreel, of course, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent her her salam. The only woman that Sayyida Aisha used to be very jealous of, and she has not met her, was Sayyida Khadija. And the only woman that he will not allow anyone to say anything about her. لا تؤذيني فيها, he used to tell. And you know how much he loved the Sayyidah Aisha. You know. And he said, don't you hurt me by saying anything not positive about her. He, he, she was jealous because she saw him after years. This is in Medina. Her friend comes in and he treats her differently. And again, and Sayyidah Aisha, I was like, why is that? He said, this is a friend of Khadija. And she said, you keep talking about her. The old woman, she used that. And he said, don't hurt me with, with Khadija. What a woman she was. What status she had with Rasulullah That years after, years after, that's how he remembered her. And he loved Sayyidah Khadija. We all know that. We all know that. She, he loved her. Subhanallah. 
And the last but not the least, and we will take the break, and I think you all now want to be Sayyida Khadija. Definitely I am. <laughs> right? Yes. Because who doesn't want to be something special? And the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam will, will be, like mention me, subhanAllah. And Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam always praised her, praised her quality, and he always asked Allah forgiveness for, uh, for her. Um, may Allah be pleased with her. I just gave you a little bit of it, and we'll take our break now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all one character of Sayyidah Khadija. One. Um, if everything is good, but let's be realistic, inshallah. Hopefully, bi'ithnillah, in the same spirit that we left, one thing I will recommend, and this is a recommendation, is try to eat less. Right? There's a lot of temptation outside. I, <laughs> I did see that. Um, you don't have to eat, right? There's a saying in Arabic. How many of you know Arabic here? Okay. نحن قوم لا نأكل حتى نجوع ولا نشبع إذا أكلنا. They say we are, meaning Muslims, not Arabs, Muslims, all of us. We are a nation that we don't eat unless we are hungry. Just a second. And when we eat, we never eat to satiation. So when I was walking and coming back, I was like, it's 11 o'clock. So what is the name of this meal? <laughs> what is that? What is it? Early lunch, late breakfast, combo, <laughs> brunch, right? So the, the idea is, and this is absolutely tasqiyah to nafs. Don't eat because there's food. You eat because you need to eat. Never eat because you like it. Then you're going to eat. Just remember yesterday, the four nafs we talked about? We said the, the commonest nafs is the nafs like the cattle-like. What makes that nafs happy is to eat and drink and sleep and have relationship. We don't want to be this. We are human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated us. Karamna bani Adam. So you want to support, which I am fully with supporting every business, Muslim business, buy it, but don't eat it. Take it with you home. Yeah? What is wrong with that? So you have done both, you supported, but don't just eat because it's a 10 minutes break, and then what happens? You'll come late. And then you have to drink something, and by the time you settle, half of the lecture is gone. And again, it's an opportunity of ilm, where I studied, and my teachers, especially before I moved to Saudi, will never allow us to bring a single food in the class. Ay, 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 if he... You will hear it, let's put it this way. Yeah, because, and I, I actually learned this from him. This was one of my, my first male teacher, because it's out of respect to knowledge. The, the more you respect the something, the more you will get out of it. We talked about it yesterday and the day before, that al qalb is salim the sound heart, in, in a nutshell, is the heart that's always with Allah. You eat, you are with Allah. You're sleeping, you're with Allah. You're in knowledge, we are Allah. You are in the mall, you are with Allah. How do I get there? So the second one, remember? Afdalu nisa'i al-jannah. The best woman of Jannah. We said the first one of Sayyidah Khadija. Second one, Sayyidah Fatima. And this one is, is what, when you read about her, and when you, yeah, subhanAllah, it's, it's, again, how did she look like? Sayyida Fatima. Fatima bint Muhammad bint Abdullah. What is her nickname? The flower. Fatima to Zahra. The flower. So Sayyida Khadija was the Atahira, the pure. Sayyida Fatima, the flower. Why is that? Because she was his daughter and he loved her. And we're going to share with you some of the hadiths about her. So she's like a flower to him, alayhi salatu wasalam. 
She was not only the daughter of Rasul but she was also a muhaditha. She narrated hadiths from Rasul and companion narrated hadith from her also. Now characters. Now this is a younger girl. Right? This is a young girl. Who's her mother? Sayyidah Khadija. Who's her father? Sayyidina Rasul So let's look at that. Number one, she was very well known to be patient. Patient. Persevering. She didn't give up easily. Did not give up easily. And at the same time, she was very generous and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patient, generous, perseverance, never give up easily. And she was grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who's her children? So now this is a married woman. And her husband is Sayyidina Ali. Don't say Ali. He's not my friend. Right? So either you say Ali ibn Abi Talib, then you have identified him. Or say Sayyidina Ali. Everybody knows Sayyidina Ali. Right? Why did she marry Sayyidina Ali? Or the question is, why not? He was not rich. He was very poor. Very poor. Now remember, I want you to compare. Sayyidina Khadija, she married also very poor. Right? And this is her daughter. The daughter of Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam. Imagine. Right? So absolutely nobility in the sight of Allah. But she married Sayyidina Ali. She was 15 when they get married. But the marriage didn't take place till she was 18. And he was 21. What, what made you marry Sayyidina Ali? So number one is, is courage. You know the story, 16 years of age, they were about to kill him. Courageous. And supporter of her father. And before supporter of her father, a supporter of the deen. A man stood up for the deen. A man was willing to give his life for the deen. Those are the people that we need to think of for marriage. And when you read, the, this is what I tell people all the time. When you read the seerah, you know, it's like the seerah again, seerah course, you know, you say this. It's not about seerah course. It's about what is in that seerah that I need to learn and I need to apply in my life. When I look at the best woman of Jannah, the father is Sayyidina Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. The mother is Sayyidina Khadija. And then she marries very poor. Very poor. And he, she didn't marry him he, because he's the cousin of her father. There's so many other cousins. But it's his sacrifice for this deen. And his support of her father, alayhi salatu wasalam. Now she also, uh, uh, she used to be another nickname. Very nice, this one. Ummu Abiha. The, the mother of her father. Memorize this. This is only her. Ummu Abiha, the mother of her father. Because she looked like him, the closest one to him was her. And also she took very good care of her father. And, and you know the famous story? When in Mecca, when Rasul they throw on him, alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was in sujood, and they throw on him what? The intestine of the animal, all over. She came in crying, removing it from her father back. How old was she? Look at our teenagers these days. Look at our adults. This is a young girl. Her mother is Khadija. Her father is Rasul Aran and removed all this from her father, crying. Bintu Abiha, Ummu Abiha, because she looks like him as if he is her son. You know, that's why they call it, right? And also because of the special relationship they had. And I'll share with you a couple of the incidents. 
الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام when he go to a battleground outside Medina and he comes back the first house he go and visit is uh, Sayyidah Fatima none of his wives and we all know the most beloved person to him is who most beloved person to Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam who Sayyidah Aisha he was asked he was asked by the Sahaba Ya Rasulullah Man ahabbu nasi ilayk who is the most beloved person to you and he said Aisha it's actually a man who asked him the question one of the men companion and they said he was hoping he will say his name yep and he said Aisha he didn't give up he said, okay, this is a woman. Let's try another question. Honestly, he said, woman and rijal, how about from the men? And he was hoping his name. He said, Abiha, her father. So that's, that's Sayyidah Aisha, that bond. But still when he came back after an expedition, long travel, he first went home to visit is her, her house, Sayyidah Fatima. Alayha salam. Right? And Rasulullah said the following. How many fathers in this room from the brothers? How many are you fathers? You have children? Right? Show me hands. Can I see that? Right. And how many mothers in this room? Tabarakallah. Right? If I mention your daughter's name, what are you going to say? Oh, she's giving me a hard time. <laughs> right? She wants to go to this college. I don't know. What does she wants to study? Right? I don't like the way she does this and that. True? Yes? Silence. I don't know what that means. <laughs> he said the following on her, about her. Rasul said, Fatima bid'atun minni. Faman aghdabaha aghdabani. Fatima is part of me. Part of me. Whomsoever made her angry. He had made me angry. How many fathers, how many of you women, your father said this about you? I wish. Right? You know what's the special here? I don't know if you paid attention to it or not. It's not about her. It's about the Rasul is is not shy to show his affections. You know, some men... They don't see, it's like showing affections shouldn't be in public, right? Especially with the children. That, you know, mothers does that, but fathers usually, I don't know about Malaysia, but definitely in the Arab world, usually men are more reserved in showing their feelings. Not the Rasulullah He said, she is part of me. Whomsoever makes her angry, have made her angry. And then the Rasulullah sallallahu this is also another hadith, this is Sayyidah Aisha. And a, a woman asked Sayyidah Aisha, who was the most beloved people to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now pay attention to this one. So Sayyidah Aisha was asked, who's the most beloved people to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa She said, Fatima. And then from the men, now the question to Sayyidah Aisha, he said, Zawjuha. Ali, إنه كان صواما قواما. He was fasting all the time and he prayed the night all the time. What is special about this hadith I just shared with you? Now you are the wife. Okay? This is a stepdaughter. Fatima is a stepdaughter for Sayyidah Aisha. Right? Her mother is Khadija. Sayyidah Khadija. So here you go. Somebody comes to you. You're married. And the husband is there. He says, who is the most beloved to your husband? What is the normal answer? Me. Why are you even asking? Of course. What does that teach you about Sayyidah Aisha? Truthfulness. Humbleness. Does not see herself something. Although he was asked and told that she is the most beloved. There's a lot of lessons we learned from these women. Not only from Sayyidah Fatima or Sayyidah, all of them. The focus, again, I'm going to say this again, 
the focus was not them and me. You know, the I, the everything these days about I and me, not them. This is a woman asked her, who is the most beloved people to your husband? And she said, Fatima, stepdaughter. And then from the men, she didn't say her father, Sayyid Abu, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. She didn't say her brother, Sayyidina Abdul Rahman. Nope. Sayyidina Ali. Both related to her husband. How much she loved the Rasul When you love someone, you love everything related to it. Right? And if you don't love someone, you can finish the sentence. Okay. <laughs> now, Look at Sayyidah Fatim, Sayyidah Aisha, how she described her. Right? She said the following. She said, Ma ra'itu ahadan kana ashbaha samtan wa hadyan wa dallan bi rasulillahi min Fatima karram Allahu wajhaha. Listen to this. Kanat ila dakhalat alayhi qama ilayha fa akhada biyadiha wa qabbalaha wa ajlasaha fi majlisi. Wa kana ida dakhala alayha qamat ilayhi فأخذت بيده قبلت وأجلسته في مجلسها. Beautiful هذا. I'll, I'll read it to you in English. سيدة عائشة said the following. I have not seen anyone who resembled الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام more than Fatima. And, and she said it in, in external shape. سمتا وهديا. The way she looked and the way she acted. Now look at this. Had a beautiful relationship between two people who love each other. In this case, a father and a daughter. And this is the stepmother saying it. She said, Can, uh, 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 when she entered, when she entered, he stood up, take her hand, kiss her hand, and make her sit in his place. And when she, when he entered on her, she stand up, take his hand, kiss his hand, and bring him in her place. This is love. Genuine. How many of you do this to their children? To their children. No one was more busy than the Rasul No one was stressed. Or actually, he wasn't alayhi salatu wasalam, but has many reasons to get stressed. Then the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, the wives, the children, the norm things we all have. But uh, he give everyone their due right. So you have to imagine this scenario. He's sitting with all these Sahaba, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Abbas and all these. And she, she entered. Right? She was young. A woman entered, stand up, go to her, hold her hand, kiss the hand in public, and bring her and make her sit in his place. What is this? And then people say Islam does not give the woman rights. 